Welcome back guys to another painting tutorial. In this video I'm going to be painting up a lowly warrior of Minas Tirith, one of the stalwarts of the Gondor army and a model that you do need a lot of. There's a lot of armour on this model and we're going to start off with Lead Belcher as the base colour for most of the silver armour. Uh, so everywhere on the model where you would see silver armour we will be putting a base coat down of Lead Belcher, so that's the sword, the helmet, the arms, uh, the arm braces, sorry, and the uh, silver parts of the shield. It's very important that you put down two thin coats of this to get yourself a nice base colour to go off. From here, we're going to be going iron breaker, and we're going to, be, going to be starting a little bit different. We're going to start with a dry brush over the lead belcher, and the reason I'm doing the dry brush at this stage and starting to add highlights is simply because I want to get a really nice coverage where I'm not worried about hitting any other part of the model uh, which I have already painted um, because when you do the skin and the cloth and everything like that we don't want to be getting any silver on there. Final highlight will be Stormhose Silver again a, a very light dry brush uh, and an actual dry brush like the one I'm using here is perfect for this. Once this is done we're going to start adding the flesh tone uh, we'll start with Cadian flesh tone as a base coat to go from and you want a very fine point on your brush here uh, get a nice coverage again thin down your paint get a nice point on your brush and it will flow nicely uh, into the gap between the uh, the helmet and uh, the face eshing grey is what i'm going to be doing my cloth areas in on this model i've seen gondor done in blues and greens and they all look very nice but i always like that really dark grey almost black colour on Gondor I just think it's really striking and looks really good and doing it this way keeps your colour palette really low um, and you tend to have to paint a lot of these in your army even in a, even in a 500 or 600 point army there's a, there's a lot of these warriors in your force if you are using Gondor uh, so using as little colours as possible is always going to help you when you are batch painting and painting larger armies this is a fiddly bit on the shield uh, and I do have to uh, just say take your time, uh, try and not get any paint on the actual emblem, the tree or the little studs down the side of the shield. Um, take your time with this stage and it will put you in good stead. You can really ruin a model by ruining the shield um, by rushing it on these warriors. So dryad bark is the colour that I'm going to be going for for all my strappings, all my leather belts the shield uh, strap you can see here uh, and anything like that I'm going to be doing a base coat of dryad bark I really like dried bark it's a nice warm brown uh, and it just looks great on the model there are other brown wooden parts which I want to look slightly different so I'm going to go slightly darker with the base color here and use a rhinox hide on the inside of the shield um, it's not a lot it's not a big area but it, it's an area that stands out quite a lot against the rest of it so I don't want it to blend in with the straps. I'll highlight the skin here using Kislev Flesh. Again I'm using a smaller brush um, with a very very fine point. Thin your paints, can't stress that enough um, and it'll just make your life a hell of a lot easier. We are now going to go in and put some of the grain on the inside of the shield using Gorthor Brown. A similar technique to what we done with the Easterling uh, woodwork really fine lines and if you find that it's quite difficult to get to especially on this pose if you find that you do smudge just go back over it with the rhinox hide. Bane blade brown is the final colour that we're going to go on here get some more of them stripes in try and pick out the grain I will also use the bane blade as an edge highlight for my dried bark straps and belts I think once you get a wash on there it looks great now I'm going to use Reichland Flesh Shade, a very tiny amount, water down, I always water down my washes. It's easy to add more if you don't put enough on, um, but if you put too much on it can be a nightmare to get it off. As you can see it's already got a nice uh, tone to it and looks really nice over them base colours. Retribute Your Armour I will use for the hilt of the sword and the small buckle at the front of the warrior. Very tiny amount of gold but it does break up that silver a bit and it's well worth taking your time getting it nice and neat. And getting a nice flat colour. Um, we are going to be highlighting this at a later stage but you want it a, a nice decent flat colour here and don't forget the belt buckle at the front. Again just breaking up that silver really does make this model pop a little bit more. 
we'll now start adding a null oil wash again thin down um, we want this to go in all the crevices but we don't want it to stain too much from there I'll go to Agrax and I'll do the woody areas the uh, belts and straps uh, the gold areas it just gives it a really nice rich feel before we put the highlight on the gold uh, I really love Agrax it's, it's used for a lot of colors I use it for a lot of colors anyway it's a great great shade a shabti bone now I'll go in very fine brush um, very fine point on my, on my brush should I say I'll be picking out the teeth again this is an optional uh, stage but I think if you're able to do it and you're confident enough to do it it does make a difference here you can see me picking out the eyes again this is optional uh, you can go as far as you'd like with this uh, on the east building I just put the uh, used Rhinox hide just to put two slits for the eyes and that worked perfectly well with this warrior you see a little bit more of the face so as you can see I've done the teeth I'll go back in with the Ashabti bone again uh, and I'll dot the eyes just to give it a little bit more detail it's well worth taking your time here and it's worth practicing if you have always been scared of eyes which I was for a long long time and sometimes just left them um, the only thing that I'd say is get in there give it a go once you've done a few it's, it's kind of like muscle memory um, you will find it a lot easier I still mess up the odd face here and there but it's easily rectified if you know how if you mess the eye up just go back over with the flesh color drop a little tiny bit of water down wash in there and start again um, but like I say if you can get it in like that it does make a big difference a little bit more of a highlight using the Shabti bone mixed in with the lighter flesh tone uh, just picking out the, uh, the jaw and the higher points on the chin and some of the top lip um, again it's well worth doing if you're confident enough to do it I'm going to highlight the greys now I'm going to use Mechanica standard grey all the edges all the raised areas on the grey that I've done before again this is tabletop standard um, with in mind painting a full army so we want something quick and easy that looks effective and I think this way of highlighting your cloth is a really nice way to get a decent finish on what could take you a long long time when you're doing it normally don't forget this little bit under the arms like I did this little bit of cloth I've had to go back in here <laughs> and paint it uh, but yeah I, luckily I noticed it in the end but highlighting the small areas of gold with Liberator Gold really love this colour uh, against the Retributor Armour it looks fantastic and then we're going to come in with Stormhole Silver and pretty much highlight everything that's metal even the gold areas just a little dot on the gold points um, really really does look good we're edge highlighting here we're picking up um, the edges of the armor plating uh, the embellishment of the tree of gondor on the chest plate the edges of the shoulder pads in and around the shield and everything like that and uh, we're coming to the end of our paint job here not forgetting the sword um, you know highlighting the sword again it's not my forte I, I need more practice on that but I think just getting an edge highlight on a decent sword uh, really does make it pop you can see me here just going in final details uh, and just making that armor shine a little bit more onto the base and we're going to use the contrast paint wildwood it's kind of my go-to I've said this before I will get a good decent amount of the wildwood contrast paint all over the base get an even coverage um, and let that dry off once that's dry, I'll uh, be dry brushing in a Mournfang brown. This will be turning it into like a, a, a muddy effect. And it's, it's how I base most of my kind of Gondor-esque type uh, bases. And then a final highlight of a Shabti bone. Just makes it pop a little bit. Um, and once we get the, uh, the rim painted black and some detailing on this base, like so I think it really really is effective and really easy and really quick to do and that's uh, a quick and easy Gondor warrior I hope you've liked this tutorial please do subscribe if you haven't done already and share this video let me know what you think